With nearly 20% of the American population, five states are choosing their preference for the next president tonight. First polls close in Florida at 7 Eastern, with others closing at 8 Eastern in Florida. That's after everybody has feasted on the early bird special. North Carolina and Ohio close at 7.30 Eastern, and the entire Newsmax broadcast team will be here until midnight tonight with the results and the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Back to work then, leave the wailing to the amateurs. First up, he is the former head of FEMA, seasoned political commentator, and now just moments away from hitting the Rocky Mountain airwaves every day, 6.30 KHOW, weekday afternoons, 4 to 7 Mountain Time. He is also the next starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. Why not? Michael Why Brown, not? joined by the senior political editor at Forbes.com, bringing his own personal sense of political style and common sense from the left, which immediately puts him in some rare air. Co-host <laughs> of Steel and Unger weeknights from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM POTUS 124. Call and demand his NCAA bracket picks now. Rick Unger. Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Let's go ahead and get to work. Boy, if the Broncos only did that. Here we go. Let's start out here I'm before we get to <laughs> before we get to everything about all the elections and everything and what's going to go on in the primaries here tonight. Bob Schieffer of CBS News has covered every political election since 1964. He is a very even-handed voice on what goes on politically. He talked about the GOP being replaced by something new after the election. Now, here's what he said, and there's something to be said about both sides when we come back. Here we go. If Trump wins the nomination before the convention, and it looks like he probably will, it's going to turn the Republican Party on its ear. If it goes to an open convention, it'll be a bloody fight that could break the party into two parties. In either case, the Republican Party, Scott, as we used to know it, will be replaced by something new. Exactly what that will be is uncertain, and that is the scariest part of all. We're going to look at both sides here. So, Michael, I'm going to begin with you. I think what he's saying is dead on. We've been talking about this now for several months. Do you agree that no matter what happens, Donald Trump's elected, anybody else, the Republican Party is looking at being a very different and maybe to some an unrecognizable party moving forward into the future. Oh, absolutely. I think Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Tipping Point, describes exactly what's going on, and we've reached that tipping point. But I had not heard that Bob Schieffer soundbite before, and I agreed with everything he said until the end that we should be very afraid. I don't know why we should be afraid of this. This is something that probably needs to occur whether we have Donald Trump or don't have Donald Trump, look, the electorate is clearly frustrated, it's clearly angry, so there needs to be a cleansing of some sort. So I'm not afraid of this, I'm actually embracing this. But how deep does that cleansing need to go in so many ways? Because we are looking there. at the possibility that, quite frankly, Michael, and Rick, I'm going to get to you on this in a minute as well, that the two-party system in this country simply doesn't work anymore. It's archaic. People want more choices, and they need to be able to say, look, I'm not going to pay whether you're left, right, Republican, Democrat. It's more than the money. It's about what we need to lead this nation. But I disagree. I don't think it's the failure of the two-party system. I think it's the failure of the people in these parties that have failed. I, look, whether we have two parties, three parties, four parties, I don't, I'm not really sure that makes, that makes any difference. What we need are parties that actually represent the interests of the American people. You know, to heck with crony capitalism, to heck with all of the, the kind of wheeling and dealing that goes on. We need to get back to basic constitutional principles. And if that means an implosion within the Republican Party, then I say hallelujah. Let's go for it. Rick, we talk about this a lot here on this show. We always talk about, first thing it seems that always comes out of people's mouths is how the Republican Party is going to change. Yeah. I disagree. I say it's both parties right now. There is a discourse going on on the left right now with somebody who's out here, matter of fact, who says that no lives were lost in Libya. Maybe we'll get to that in a moment as well, who also, quote unquote, may be under indictment. Let's leave that aside. But a socialist walking in here, come on, Rick, the Democratic Party is just as much in danger of changing, being blown up, and maybe it needs to be as well. Well, I, you know, I actually don't know that that's true. It could be true down the road, and there's definitely a schism in the Democratic Party. It's certainly going much more towards the, the left side, if you will. Uh, people like myself, who would identify more as a central left person, we may find ourselves without much of a party after, after this election. On the Republican side, I do want to raise one thing. Everybody puts this on Donald Trump. I'm no fan of Donald Trump. But let me tell you something. If you want to trace this, this schism issue, go
go back to the Tea Party and how they chose to take the easy way. If the Tea Party had not just folded itself into the Republican Party and done what they should have done, which was establish a third party, you'd have a whole different situation now. You'd already have those two parties, but they didn't. They took the easy way out, and now that's the problem with the Republican Party. Is that not part of basically what we're talking about here, though? Because if the Tea Party would have done what you said, they would have come out with a quote-unquote outsider, perhaps. Yep. I think yep. there's the word that we're looking at here, Rick. If you look at Donald Trump, complete outsider. If you look at what's going on on the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders, in many ways, a complete outsider. The American really. people are saying, we're sick and tired of this. We'll take an outsider. Just speak to us for a change. Well, Bernie, Bernie Sanders really isn't an outsider. He just wasn't unknown. But to he's most seen as one. Wouldn't you agree? He, because of where he's, he's from and what he stands for in many ways on the, on the quote unquote socialism side, he's seen as the outsider. He's seen, yeah, he certainly seems different. I'll, I'll certainly say that. Um, yeah, you know what, though, as I say, if, if the schism in the Democrats, and you're right in noting that it's there, it's clearly there, but I don't see it erupting quite so soon. Uh, it, it's going to take a little bit longer. And it's actually not going to be the, the, the far left that's going to split off. They will inherit the Democratic Party. I think they already have. It'll be the, uh, the Clinton wing, if you will, the Bill Clinton wing, the, the new Democrats, the central Democrats. Those are the ones who are going to be forced to split off. So, Michael, if indeed there would become a new Republican Party, as Bob Schieffer indicated here, and I do agree with him, I think it's going to come, what should that new Republican Party look like? What should it feel like to people? What, what's that newness? I, I think it's getting back to what capitalism is supposed to be about free markets. It's supposed to be about individualism and individual liberty. And look, and I ask my listeners this a lot. I ask them on Twitter, Facebook. I'll ask, I'll ask the listeners in this audience right now. Do we still have a nation that can actually live in a country that is that is governed by limited government that says the individual is sacrosanct and that we're going to live in individual liberty? Or have we kind of gone beyond the Rubicon now and, and we don't want that? We want Big Brother. We want somebody to protect us. We're scared to death of everything. And when you turn on the news, it's ISIS. It's thuggery. It's everything. Everywhere you look, we're supposed to be afraid of something. I question whether or not we can still live in liberty. And I think that's what the party needs to stand for. Free markets, individual liberty, smaller government, less taxes, a, a, a constrained regulatory framework. Look, I'm not an anarchist. We need regulations, but regulations are out of control. Can we do that? That's what I want it to look like. So, Rick, same thing to you then. Let's blow up the Democratic Party right now and leave it in tatters. What does the new party need to look like? Well, it depends who inherits the party, and I think that goes for both sides. Look, if, uh, if Hillary Clinton inherits the party, it's more centrist, and then you have the progressives maybe feeling the need to go somewhere else, and vice versa. If the Bernie Sanders wing inherits the party, which I think is more likely, you have the centrists that have to start something else. Same on the Republican side. Look, you know, it, if Donald Trump is the nominee of the party, and it does look like he is, then it seems to me it's the Republican Party that's going to be cashing up or giving up on what uh, Brownie's talking about, because Donald Trump is not a free market uh, yeah. candidate. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. So, so I think you'll see the more traditional Republicans having to go start something else if he ends up in control of the party. All right. A couple of minutes we got left here. We've got to talk about a couple of issues here. I needed to get you guys on this one because this is great for the two of you. Dr. Ben Carson, he was on with our colleague Steve Mulsberg last night, <laughs> was talking about Donald Trump. And he did not sound like he was actually very convinced that Donald Trump should be president, which is interesting. Here's what he said. Even if Donald Trump turns out not to be such a great president, which which I don't think is the case, I think he's going to surround himself with really good people. But uh, but even if he didn't, we're only looking at four years, uh, as opposed to multiple generations and perhaps the loss of the American dream forever. Um, I'm sorry, Brownie, but I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Dr. Carson, but, hey, we're only looking at four years if he screws up. I mean, and this but is look, a guy who Ed, just backed him. Ed, 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 and I'm not trying to tell you how to do your show, <laughs> but you missed what I thought was the absolute best part of that soundbite, and that was that apparently Trump has promised him some position in his administration. Yeah. Rod Blagojevich is sitting in federal prison not 10 miles from where I'm sitting right now, 
for trading on in public corruption. The idea that, hey, I'll get a seat if you do this. I think Dr. Carson and, Dr. And, and Donald Trump have gotten awfully close to that line of public corruption. Hey, well, if you endorse me, I'll give you a position. That's Trump's getting not in office iffy. yet, so. All right, go ahead, Rick. I, I agree, but it's iffy. Yeah. It's iffy. Well, let me let me start by doing my best Ben Carson imitation. I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> oh, um, you are cold, I, it, man. Cold. It, it was. It was remarkable, actually. I mean, that's maybe the, I like Ben Carson. I've interviewed him. I think he's a nice guy. We all he, like him. Every, there's yeah, not a person in the world who doesn't mind. like him. This is the first time I've agreed with him. I mean, because what he was basically saying was, look, if Trump is terrible, and I think he will be, um, well, we'll survive. And I agree. We always survive. And we'll survive four years of Trump if that's what we have to do. Uh, the difference is, is I haven't endorsed Donald Trump, and he has. Okay, 20 seconds to each of you. The New York Daily News criticized Chris Christie, who decided to campaign for Donald Trump instead of attending a trooper's funeral. It's, I believe, the third or fourth time he's done it. And the front cover of the New York Daily News, Chris's dead cop diss. Uh, 20 seconds to you here, Mr. Unger. Has Chris Christie just become the greatest sellout in, in modern memory? Yeah. I got to tell you, I have I have like deep sympathetic pangs for Chris Christie watching him become a puppy dog after he was such a badass. I mean, I, I've never seen such a transformation. He is going to need a lot of counseling and therapy. 20 seconds to you, Mike. Yeah, his, his political career is dead. I, oh, I yeah. think, look, you're still mm. the, you're still the governor. And to diss the cops that way is just it's. It's unacceptable. I'm big on law enforcement. I always have been. I've said it out loud. I'm disgusted by what Chris Christie did, and I think the family should. I think the people of New Jersey should be as well. Rick Unger, Michael Brown, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week. Polls being closing at 7 Eastern time. This special edition of The Hardline with all the pregame discourse continues as we bring you America Votes here on Newsmax until midnight Eastern time tonight. All the numbers, all the comments, all the speeches, everything you need to know. Stay with us right here on Newsmax and Newsmax.com.